Good morning, Europe. Good morning, Africa. Good afternoon, India and China. Good evening, Australia. Welcome to our second Seed Care webinar, DigiCare. My name is Martin Ferber. I'm the global commercial head of Syngenta Seed Care located in Basel, Switzerland, and I'm your moderator today. First, a few rules about the webinar. Your camera and microphone should be automatically muted. If you have a question, you can type it into the box at the bottom right of the screen, and these questions will go to the panelists only. The webinar will also be recorded, and you will get a link to look at it at your convenience later on. If you look at me and you think I'm slightly underdressed, or if you think I have too long hair, you're right, there's a good reason for that. I'm actually practicing home office since five weeks. The coronavirus is impacting us all. And we as Syngenta, we have business continuity plan, but we strictly follow the recommendations, practicing social distancing and home office. But of course, we all know the farmers in the world, they don't have, the farmers do not have a home office at this moment. And maybe behind me, what you can see is a, a carpet, uh, which reminds me all the time, it has actually corn on it. It's an African wool carpet with white corn on it, maize on it. And it reminds me how important actually farmers are these days to have a great crop. They depend for us to feed the world and their population. While the spreading of the fall armyworm around the globe is really continuing at rapid speed. Unfortunately, we had to cancel most of our face-to-face -face meetings and events like the African Seed Association Congress, the International Seed Congress, they all had to be canceled. But we want to be sure that our customers and the growers around the globe have an updated and adequate access to all what Syngenta has to offer to helping farmers to protect their crop. I'm not alone today, so I have actually the experts around me. I hope you can see the slide properly. It is Pali Peterson, the global head of product management, seed care. He'll be one of the speakers. And Craig Thompson, he is in charge of our Asia Pacific uh, operations based out of Singapore. And we all know how the full army worm has moved dramatically also into Asia Pacific. So in the second part of the presentations, we will have Craig Thompson, since he's leading the seed care product uh, management for Asia Pacific. I think he is really very qualified to talk about this important pest. Now, without further ado, let me go straight into the presentations. And I would like to hand over to Pali Peterson to talk to, uh, to us from a global perspective about the importance of full army worm and what he can do to the crop. Over to Pale. Thank you, Martin, and uh, good, op good morning, good evening, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. As you can see, I look a little bit tired here, if you can see me on the screen. It's not because I didn't sleep, but uh, for the last couple of weeks, the pollen has been really bad in Boston. So for those of you who deal with allergies, uh, I may look a little serious on the screen, but it's just, it's, it's, it's quite bad here. So, uh, so we will do our best. What I want to talk to you about today is fall armyworm and for Tentaduo. And um, fall armyworm is probably the most devastating pest we have, or one of them, in our corn crops right now, and uh, it's spreading very fast. So if we go to the next slide, please. Fall armyworm, you know, it's uh, it, it it consists of a big group of uh, many species of uh, Lepidoptera. For those of you who can remember from the days when you had entomology, um, Lepidoptera is a big order of uh, insects that can be quite devastating. The larvae, of course, will, um, um, will uh, feed on the leaves. And then, of course, the, uh, the moths will migrate. And um, this is one of the reasons why it can be so devastating. The symptoms, in many cases, as you, uh, as you know, uh, for the, the, the species we call mostly cutworm, they will cut the plants at the surface of, of, the, of the ground, and, um, but they can also deteriorate 
uh, the leaves. And you know, I have heard uh, farmers and and um, and uh, agronomists in Brazil talk about the uh, the uh, the lawnmower or the the, the chopper. Uh, these insects, if they are not managed uh, from day one, uh, they can they can determine um, the entire uh, season for a crop. Uh, they can deteriorate it completely and, and kill the plant. Um, both, of course, the leaves, uh, but they shoot, uh, go up to the shooting point, and um, and of course, uh, overall, can have a big impact. So, go to the next slide, please. It is very fertile. Um, each of these adults can can lay up to two thousand eggs per female, and um, the reproduction rate is very very fast. And it also migrating very fast. A great example: this insect does not like snow and Swiss environment. So uh, sitting here in Basel, Switzerland today, uh, there was no fall armyworm here over the winter. Um, but they are, they are migrating. Uh, a great example is from North America, where they overwinter in Central America, Puerto Rico, uh, Southern Texas, and then they will migrate up into Canada and into the Northern United States, and they will do that over a very short period of time. So the migration could be thousands of kilometers. And then on top of that, it's not host plant specific, so it can it can uh, it can feed and and it can cause damage on anything that has green plant materials out there, and for especially for agriculture and why we are so focused on this uh, insect a pest right now is simply due to it has a big impact on corn, sorghum, sugar beet, rice and vegetables, which have a very big impact in our in our food chain. Uh, next slide, please. So if you look here, I talked a little bit about it before, not going to go into a lot of details, but uh, just to give you an example, you know, top left corner, you can see a uh, cutting of the plants, uh, you lose in stand, uh, particularly for a crop like corn, where there's a very high correlation between uh, plant population and yield onto, of course, to a specific point. But uh, when you only have one ear per plant, that can have a big impact compared to other crops that can compensate for space. So that's a big one. Another one is also, you can see at the bottom left, um, uh, you can see when they're feeding on the ear, um, uh, earworms and, and, and other insects like that. Uh, of course, they will cause a yield loss, but it will also uh, be a penetration point for toxins like mycotoxin that can have a huge impact on, uh, on the quality of the grain and if it can be used for human and, and livestock consumption. So, so managing fall armyworm from day one is very critical to get the populations down, get a management program in place. And when you have that, that will help you to get the crop established and, and be able to have a high quality uh, crop in the end. Next slide, please. So here is an example on, on just on the spreading. And again, this is a seminar. If you want to know much more details on it, I will be happy to share it with you. But this is just based on data we have, has been collected. Um, uh, many of the UN organization, FAO, uh, you can get these data points from there. But pretty much this insect started in the Americas, so Central America, South America, and of course, I just talked about the North America, and it pretty much stayed there for, for years. And then in 2016, it was discovered first in Africa. And um, how it got from the Americas and into Africa, that's still not known. Probably a jet stream would have carried it over the Atlantic, um, but when it got into Africa, within months, it just spread rapidly. And today it's found throughout most of Africa. Recently, it was just confirmed also in Egypt and uh, on the border to the Mediterranean. And, you know, we are predicting um, that it will, it will probably move north of the Mediterranean as well into uh, more the European Union. Uh, we don't know if it will be able to overwinter there, but it, the, the gut feeling is that it will, it will move into those regions. And then you can see as soon as it got into Africa, then that was not far to India, where it showed up in 2018, moved into China, whereas pretty much throughout Southern China today, Japan. And then just in February, it was confirmed in Australia. And I just read last week now that it has spread as far west as Darwin in Australia, uh, throughout the Northern Territories, and um, it, it's causing a lot of damage. So this insect, as I said earlier, it, it caused a lot of damage and is migrating very fast and it has a very high fer fertility rate. So it's, it's producing a, a offspring very quickly. Next slide, please. So because of that, we're very happy and proud that we have Fertensa Duo. So Fertensa Duo is the 
superior insecticide from Syngenta that is consists of two active ingredients. The leading brand, uh, Cruiser, also known as Thymethoxin, mixed with uh, Fortenta, which is a cyanotinilopole. Those two modes of action give you the most complete broad spectrum seed applied insecticide in the market today. Uh, it will give you broad insect control both above and below ground, and I'll go into a little bit in details on that later. It will give you a long lasting residual effect. Um, it will increase your return on investment because you will be able to get complete protection and, and the, the, the value versus uh, the loss from insects is, uh, there's no comparison in this case. And then on top of that, for parts of the world, so this webinar here we have today, it's a global webinar, uh, regions in the world where BT traits are, are very common use, uh, for tend to do work very well with these BT traits. You have multiple mode of action, uh, uh, controlling uh, potential insect resistance, and, and, and uh, it really is a nice complete uh, program have those two together. So if we go to the next slide, we'll go into a little bit more details on this. So we're looking at here um, from a more uh, scientific standpoint, uh, you know we have insects above, above and below ground. Above ground is mostly sucking pests like uh, aphids, thrips, uh, hoppers, and a, a compound that is systemic with a, a high water solubility is very critical. And cruiser, but also for tensor, this is one of the reasons why Fortenza is the best diamide. So it's, it belongs to the classical, uh, to, to the class of diamides and insecticide. Why these two companies so well, uh, so um, working so well? Because of the sol solubility, they are systemic, moving up in the xylem through the plant, and will give get you above ground protection. But it will also give you protection against Coleoptera, and then of course the Lepidoptera, where our fall armyworm is part of that. And then below ground, we have all what we call the soil dwelling pest or uh, mo mostly lane term, I call them soil pest. So grubs, wireworms, uh, seed corn, maggots, and you name it. And, and both compound works very well on that. So multiple mode of action really fit well for above and below ground. As a grower, you have nothing to worry about because it will give you the uh, comfort that you see this protection. But also for, as a seed company, you will protect your genetic yield potential to give the maximum return on investment when the grower buy your seed. So the next slide. So how well is this compound and uh, these two uh, active ingredients? And, and here's a more, um, it's, it's, a, it's a way that our plant pathologies and entomologies, they are, they are showing uh, the marketing people, you know, us in marketing, we like colors. So this is a little bit more easier to understand. But if you're doing on a scale from zero to 10, where 10 is, uh, I will call it the Mercedes Benz, uh, these compounds um, by themselves do not give you a complete protection both above and below ground. But when you're putting them together, you give that complete uh, package. And if, if you move one more forward, uh, Martin, you can see here when you're, when you're grouping then the insect groups that I added before, what I talked about before, you can see that the orange area is the Crucithymethoxin solo, does very well in the Coleoptera, Diptera, and the sucking pest. And then of course the Lepidoptera to the left, uh, Crusa has activity on it, but uh, no, nothing comparing to Fortensa and Cyanotinilopole, putting them together, you get the complete protection, which is so unique. So to get an idea about how well this product is, let's look at a little movie and hopefully here in the, uh, in the high technology phases here, you will be able to see, uh, see the movie uh, with your bank with around the world. So as you can see here to the right, you see corn uh, treated with a potenza duo and to the left, you have untreated plants. Uh, we still have many crops around the world that don't get a seed applied insecticide. And just to give you an idea, the implication um, if you are in that situation. As you can see, uh, you can see that the plants start to wilt, um, the defoliation is happening, and uh, the, 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 uh, the, the uh, fall armyworms here are happy, they're chewing, uh, and uh, you see to the right, you see the protection. Uh, plants are healthy, happy. Um, vigorous and, and keep growing. You can even see the, the worms are trying to, to chew to the right. You don't see any impact on, on the plant. Um, now there's nothing really left to the left. So in general, what we're seeing on the protection um, I assume this question will come, so let me just address it now. In general, 
the the le- the length of protection depends on uh, of course, the use rate in a specific country, the environment conditions, and then also um, what are the implications of um, of, uh, of the dose rate. So in, 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 on average, we say you will get of up to four weeks of, um, of protection uh, from for, for tend to do on these lepidoptera. Um, of course, uh, it depends, as I said, but up to four weeks is a good guideline. And that's why uh, stacking it together with, for example, a GM trait that may not work from day one, uh, but it will take a little bit of days before it kicks in, or of course with a foliar program, and you will hear that later in the presentation. That's why they work so well together. That you need to you need to look at the whole kitchen sink, if we can use that terminology, um, to be able to get uh, season-long protection uh, when you have fall armyworm in the field. Thanks, Martin. So let's go to the next slide, please. So let's look a little bit of data. I don't, I'm not going to dump a lot of data slides on you here, but as you can see here, it's a great example. This is a damage from a fall armyworm in Mexico. Uh, we got three treatments. Uh, on the y-axis, you see percent plant damage. And the first bar is fungicide alone. The second bar is um, fungicide alone plus our cruiser. That's what they call cruiser max corn in, uh, in Mexico. And then to the right, you see uh, with the Fortensa do. So this is cruiser max corn plus Fortensa. And you can see you're going from 30% uh, plant damage down to less than 5% with Fortensa do. And this is average across 40 locations. So an extremely powerful uh, data set. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. If we then go in and look at yield, and this is some data from uh, when I was in US, just to give you an example, um, across uh, 31 trials in US, uh, this is yield and it's, it's kilo per hectare or tons per hectare. And for the North American, um, you will have to convert this back to bushel per acre. Um, but you look at the, the left, uh, bar, left bar, it's the, the base fungicide only. Then we got with the, what we in Africa called, uh, in Mexico is only called Cruiser Max Corn, uh, which is the base fungicide plus Cruiser. And then we got with the Fortensa do, you're adding Fortensa on top. And then you compare it to uh, another you know, neonicotinoids like Cruiser, which is uh, Clothianidin or Pancho. A uh, couple of things we see here. Uh, cruiser is, is when you look at across the, the location, it is the most uh, systemic compound uh, compared to Poncho. And you see it on the performance. It's uh, nearly 150 kilo, uh, a little bit more than 150 kilo, more per hectare compared to Clothianidin. But if you look at the Fortensa on top of this, uh, you see more than, uh, more than uh, 350 kilos. And this is done under a higher impress pressure and meaning it was not inoculated, but it was more, we went in and did trials in continuous corn, use redu- reduced tillage practices, so you have more residue on your, on, your, on, your, on your soil surface, but really a nice way to explain that even <clears throat> in areas where the uh, fall armyworm does not overwinter, just natural insect pressure for tend to do, give a really nice boost to, to the bottom line. Next slide, please. Then an, another slide uh, from, from Asia, and this is from, uh, from China. Um, um, black copworm <clears throat> is also a lepidoptera that is very common there. Uh, many corn acres uh, are not treated at all in, in, uh, with an insecticide in, uh, in, uh, in, in China. And here's an example of three treatments. To the left, you have the untreated, so uh, no, no, uh, no, no insecticide. To the right, you see the local standard, which I can't remember on top of my head what that was, but I believe it was an old pyrethroid. And then in the middle, you have Fortensa. Uh, you really get nice uniform uh, canopy stand establishment, no gaps in the rows, and just a, just a beautiful crop and, and plant establishment. So, next slide, please. So, my last slide is just a little bit about the registration. So, this is the worldwide registration platform. Um, the big markets in the Americas, so North America, South America, we already have uh, registrations on many crops. We're now moving in, of course, to Asia and Africa, where fall armyworm are expanding. And, uh, and more of the lipidoptera are coming in. And this is just to give you a quick uh, snapshot. Uh, the dark green is where we have registrations today on some of the major crops. Um, they may not all have all the crops here, but if you have any specific regulatory questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, put the question in uh, to us, and we will follow back with our local regulatory team and give you more specific details. So by that, we just saw a slide about, um, about uh, corn uh, and, and black copperworm in Asia. I will hand it over to my colleague, Craig Thompson, uh, from our Singapore office, who will talk about the experiences he has seen with a fall armyworm in Asia and, and China, and uh, his recommendation to the growers on how to manage this devastating pest.
Thanks, Pelle. Uh, well, welcome to Singapore, everyone. Uh, it's great you could make a little bit of time to, to join us. Um, so I want to, to take you um, through our experiences over the last roughly one and a half years since um, since Fall Army were made its way to, to Asia. It posed, obviously, a, a unique um, challenge to, to us, but also somewhat of a, a unique opportunity for Syngenta. The challenge, as Pelle explained, is, um, is due to the biology of the pest. It's very fast moving. Um, it's uh, got a huge appetite um, and it's got an ability to, uh, to attack a wide range of, uh, of plants. In addition to that, we've got further challenges in Asia. We've got 450 million smallholder farmers. That's farmers that are, that are growing two hectares or less of, of uh, crop. Of course, there's big farmers as well. But also we've got around 60 million hectares of corn to protect. A lot of that is grown in the tropical uh, environments which are most prone to fall army worm attack. But the unique, uh, unique opportunity that we had is we realised that Syngenta has got a wealth of knowledge in the management of fall army worm. As Pelle explained, it's been a native of the Americas and we've been dealing with the, the pest in the Americas for many years. And the recent spread into Africa gave us experience in uh, smallholder environments um, and a different continent around the management of, uh, of fall army worm. We know also that we've got a fantastic portfolio of controls. Fortenza Duo, absolutely, um, as an as a important um, benchmark seed treatment product, but also we've got many insecticides for foliar applications, uh, which can be used to address the, the fall army worm attack in latter crop stages. And then finally, we've got a really, uh, a really big team of, of, of experts in the field around Asia. Um, and these people are, 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 are no more passionate than when there's an opportunity to bring some new technology to farmers to help them deal with a really significant challenge. So we had very motivated teams in, uh, in Asia um, to bring our, our suite of controls to, to the farmers. Now, as the slide in front of us shows, um, the spread of fall army worm through Asia was really rapid and somewhat as expected. It landed first or was detected first in the southern part of India um, in the second half of 2018. It spread fairly quickly through um, other states of India during that year and started to, to move across um, country borders. We found through 2019 um, that it quickly spread up into China, um, east into the Southeast Asian countries, uh, into Northeast Asia, and, uh, and then very early this year, as Paolo mentioned, um, was detected in the northern parts of, uh, of Australia um, and the biosecurity monitoring um, in Australia, which is, which is very comprehensive, um, has continued to detect fall army worms spreading through the Northern Territory and there's expectation that it will, will also move across to the, the Northern parts of Western Australia. So how did we leverage the global experience? Uh, next slide, please. We, as we mentioned, we, we had a, a wealth of experience from the Americas and more recently from Africa. And you can see in the graphics here, um, the examples of the general recommendation programs from, um, from some of those regions um, for the control of four army worm. We, we had learned that it was important to have a, a foundation of a solid uh, seed treatment product. And Fortenza Duo is absolutely the one when we talk about control of fall army worm. But we also knew that it was important to be able to monitor fall army worm in the crop stages after uh, seedling establishment and be able to apply foliar applications to control fall army worm when it occurs in those crop stages. We also knew it was important to manage um, the types of products that we were applying um, so that we looked after uh, the potential for resistance to develop in the fall army worm so that we could have ongoing control uh, in subsequent years. So we took this information in 2018, initially to our local teams to ensure that we had um, good knowledge on the ground in, in India and across the rest of Asia. We knew that it was important to try and get ahead of fall army worm, and we began talking to uh, government policymakers and regulators um, across some of the neighbouring countries to India and through Southeast Asia 
about the expected spread of fall armyworm and how we could prepare for that. We engaged with the scientific community, the university researchers, et cetera, who were also working in this light. And we began to establish through our field teams some field trials to, to allow for uh, data generation in local environments such that we could get the necessary product approvals from the regulators. And also so that we could have sites to demonstrate to our customers, the seed companies, the important channel to, to the growers through retailers and ultimately to growers how these products could be used, how they performed, and in what sequence to, to use them. And we put a lot of effort into, into that. Next slide, please. Over all of this, we, we realised it was important to communicate uh, the programme approach to controlling fall armyworm, starting with the, the fundamental um, benchmark of, of Fortenza Duo as a seed treatment. We know how critical it is to protect the very vulnerable establishing seedlings, and we know how strong Fortenza Duo is in doing that with fall armyworm. But also it's important to continue to, to scout fields uh, and look for fall, fall armyworm in the mid and, and later crop cycle, because no seed treatment is able to last for a full crop cycle under strong insect pest pressure. And so we developed a a recommendation for foliar application of, of insecticides where it was needed, uh, and also the rotation of those different chemistries to ensure that we were preserving the longevity of those. Next slide. And here are another couple of examples of the, the robust performance of Fortenza Duo in protecting those seedlings. On the left-hand side from our research and development team, in Brazil, where they produced a, an inoculated artificial trial um, to really test the, uh, the strength of Fortenza Duo. So uh, 10 seedlings were placed in a, in a contained area where fall armyworm was introduced and allowed to, to do its best at, uh, at consuming the, the seedlings. And you can see where the seedlings weren't given any seed treatment, the fall armyworm completely consumed them. On the right-hand side, a seed treatment um, had some effect preserved a few plants, but fall armyworm um, still consumed a number. And in the center, the Fortenza duo, you can see um, really providing a, a robust level of control under, under extreme artificial uh, fall armyworm pressure. On the right-hand side is a field situation from Vietnam. Again, our, our research teams there um, working on developing Fortenza duo um, brought us these images showing when not treated um, the seedling on the bottom part of that, uh, of that group of two, um, showing significant leaf feeding damage, probably sufficient to, if not, kill the plant um, to render it unproductive, versus the same seedling in, in a, a treated part of the field, um, showing the, the leaf um, feeding that we would expect to see um, prior to fall armyworm uh, being controlled by Fortenza duo. Uh, certainly, this is not sufficient to, uh, to cause any long-lasting damage to the seedling. Next slide, please. And here's a, 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 an interesting example of the way that our technical solutions team um, have been demonstrating the performance of products in the field to our, our customers, the seed companies, the retailers, and to the farmers. It's quite a, 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 a very easy to, to, to see performance uh, indicator when uh, we treat half of the field with Fortenza Duo and leave half untreated. And this is under normal um, field conditions, so, so normal fall armyworm pressure in, uh, in the southern part of India. And when we, when we had a viewing, as the seedlings had, uh, had established, we asked the customers that were visiting to, to take a, a group of flags and place them in the field where they could see a plant had been removed by the fall armyworm. And you can see very easily as you stand back after doing that exercise, um, how strong the Fortenza duo is on the left-hand side, um, preserving the majority of the, of the crop stand versus what happened to the untreated check on the right-hand side. So here, it really reinforces the message that the use of Fortenza duo is critical to secure the, the crop stand, to give that, uh, that seed genetics 
um, the potential to, to, to yield to um, as, it's, as it's designed. Um, and we know that, uh, that in the corn agronomy system, because of the relatively low planting density, that when we lose a plant, we immediately lose a cob and we lose yield potential. So protecting that from the start with Fortenza Geo is really important. Next slide, please. So to summarize our, our fall armyworm journey in, uh, in Asia Pacific, we established uh, in, in just one and a half years in excess of 200 field trials and demonstrations. Um, these were done for, for regulatory approval purposes and also to demonstrate to, to our customers and growers uh, the performance of, uh, of products. We also spent a lot of time partnering with, uh, with stakeholders and, and scientists. And you can see an image in the, in the bottom right of this um, photo taking of this slide where we engaged the Vietnam regulatory body um, to explain to them uh, the benefits of our products and how they work uh, and work with them to make these products available for farmers. After all of that, we achieved so far 25 product approvals across both seed applied and foliar applied product portfolio. Many of these were approved at a, a faster rate than would normally be expected because governments and regulators appreciated how important it was to put these products in the hands of farmers so that they could control this devastating pest. It's a huge effort by the Syngenta teams, and I know many will have joined us for this, for this webinar, so it's a great opportunity to thank them for their efforts. We had people working uh, in many different functions of the business to achieve this result, some in our field trialing teams, uh, those in our technical solutions team demonstrating products to, to growers, in our regulatory and business sustainability teams to engage with the, the governments and, and regulators, and then of course in our sales and marketing teams who bridge um, the information through to our seed company customers, to our retailers, and, and ultimately to the growers. So a great effort. Next slide um, is a summary from, from Africa. And whilst I'm not an expert on this, uh, I thank Luke Henry, our, uh, our resident Africa uh, specialist for his bullet points here. And Luke will be on the line to take any questions that are uh, specific to Africa when we finish this presentation. But the, the summary here is quite similar. So, Excitingly, Fortenza Duo was the, the first seed treatment solution to be approved in Africa for the control of fall armyworm. The team in Africa spent a lot of time on demonstration and registration trials, um, covering all of the key corn growing regions um, and providing recommendations, not just on seed treatments, but how to control fall armyworm more holistically. They collaborated with the local governments, formed private, uh, public partnerships, and ultimately uh, over half a million hectares of seeds has already been planted, treated with Fortenza Duo in Southern Africa, which is, which is fantastic in terms of securing uh, the corn crop and securing the, the farmers' uh, livelihoods in, the, in that continent. So next slide. So to summarise, we, we know we've got a very robust uh, portfolio control program available uh, from Syngenta. It needs to be customised to the country situation uh, and to the grower situation, the geography, uh, the field history, the genetics that are se selected, etc. We're not experts in all of this, but what we say is um, consider the genetics that you're using, and particularly if, if some traits are available for, for the control of fall armyworm. Use Fortenza Duo as a seed treatment. It's, a, it's an absolutely critical foundation for your fall armyworm control program. But be aware that you'll need potentially to use foliar sprays and scouting um, to observe the, the early incidence of fall armyworm in the mid and late cycle um, of the crop is important. Where we're using multiple insecticide applications, we need to be considerate of the need to rotate different modes of action so that we preserve the chemistry through resistance management program. And if we do all of this, then we have a really effective way to control this, this damaging and, uh, and, and somewhat frightening pest. Uh, and we also have a sustainable solution for ongoing production of corn 
across uh, across the globe. So thank you for that. I think we now pass back to Martin to uh, handle questions. Wow, thank you very much, Craig and Paulette. I'm impressed uh, on what Syngenta team was able to put together at short notice, obviously. Uh, the quality of the presentations, uh, the, uh, the way you delivered it, very, very well done. Uh, and of course, uh, to echo Craig, uh, thank you to all the Syngenta people around the world who helped us uh, to gather all this information in order to be able to fight against the pest uh, around the world. So well done, thank you, uh, the presenters, for uh, these uh, interesting insights. And now is your time. Uh, you can actually ask questions now. Uh, you will see at the bottom right, there is a, a box where you can enter your question. And uh, mind you, uh, we will see uh, your email address. So uh, we will know uh, who sent us the question. Uh, but that's also the good news, because I have to tell you already before the webinar, we got so many questions that unfortunately we will not be able to respond to all your questions. Uh, let me see what I can do here to read the latest questions. So for that, I need to stop share, I was told. Then I need to go into uh, another box and uh, see what questions came in and i'm so pleased you we predicted this very well uh, a lot of questions from africa and i'm very pleased to, to introduce to you uh, luc henry uh, he's the head of seed care for africa middle east and look beware there are so many questions uh, about africa so there seem to be really a lot of interest from africa and uh, without further ado i'll ask you the first one uh, to look, uh, what's the role of the NGOs and other partners to take Portenza Duo to African farmers? Over to look. So, uh, good morning, good uh, afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, it's great to have this uh, webinar connecting the world. Um, so. Collaborations are essential, Martin, in Africa. That's uh, the only way forward. Um, and we have been very active in trying to collaborate, um, you know, for two main reasons. The first one is to make sure the technology is delivered safely and uh, with the right amount on each seed. And second, to make sure we can reach the millions of smallholders across Africa. So what we've been doing for the past three years um, is, first of all, making sure our Sitka Institute is working very closely with all seed companies across Africa um, so that the treatment is done, uh, you know, the, the right way. And then we have been also uh, collaborating with a lot of um, governments. Um, I'd like to mention specifically, you know, the Zambian government and the Zimbabwean governments, which have been very supportive uh, to enable the, the technology um, and also a lot of organizations in Africa. So um, the African Bank, um, the African Development Bank has been very instrumental. Um, their technical branches like, um, you know, the um, International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, uh, very supportive. Um, their TAT groups, technologies for um, African agricultural transformation, also AGRA. Um, so all these organizations have helped us to make this technology available to, to smallholders. So uh, yes, collaborations are essential in Africa. And um, I would like to use this opportunity to thank all the partners uh, to join efforts so that we could make this uh, project uh, a reality. Thank you, Luc. I think this was very good, well explained how important partnerships are. And Syngenta, of course, we want to be the trusted partner of choice to all the organizations. Next question goes to Craig. Uh, many people, obviously, India, maybe Australia, asking, is this just corn? or any other crop being attacked by the worm? Thanks, Martin. So the, the answer is no, um, it's not just corn, but certainly it seems that corn is by far the preferred pest of fall armyworm. Um, we've had reports of, of fall armyworm um, in Asia attacking uh, sugarcane, uh, it's been observed in rice crops on occasions. Uh, it's also been observed in some vegetable crops and sorghum. Um, but these seem to be sporadic instances so far. Uh, we're hopeful that it doesn't become a, a, a huge threat in these crops, but we're also conscious that uh, it, it, it is able to 
um, to feed in these crops and particularly uh, when corn is not available for it, um, it's likely to be looking for, for, for other food sources. So um, we're, we're expecting um, to get further, further knowledge as we go through this season on, on whether there's really a significant uh, risk in other crops or, uh, or whether it's going to remain relatively sporadic. Thank you, Craig. Uh, the next question goes to Palle. It, it seems we have quite a number of countries where there's already GM corn introduced. So the question is, if I summarize two, three questions, they all want to know uh, what's the impact of genetically modified corn? Do I still need a product like Fortenza Duo? Thanks, Martin. It's, it's a really good question. And it's a question that was debated for many years in Brazil and US. Um, the two product a perfect fit to each other because GM corn um, as you know doesn't do anything to the uh, to the below ground insects so uh, in many cases a GM corn it takes a little bit of time before the protein is expressed itself in the plant to really work and during the establishment phase it may take from a week to to three weeks if it's in in US you know before you got a, a, a corn crop established so having those two technologies overlaying each other uh, give you the perfect protection. Of course, uh, going back to Craig's uh, explanation from, uh, from, from Asia, uh, if you don't have the GM crop, then you need more of these intensive um, uh, foliar applications where you need to, uh, um, where you need to uh, be able to combine them depending on, um, on uh, level of protection and, and how many days you're gonna get out there with much more monitoring. But uh, no, it's not like if you're using GM corn, you don't need to use, um, use um, uh, for Tend to Do. Uh, they are perfect combination that will give you the complete protection. Thank you so much, Paule. All clear, I guess, from that point of view. Uh, the next question goes to Luke. I know he will like that one. Uh, in Africa, how much does it cost and where can farmers get it? Yes, uh, thank you for asking. Um, actually, the answer is, is, is quite simple. Um, the price of the technology for a farmer is the equivalent of one insecticide for your spray. Right? This is what, what, what we charge through, of course, seed companies. So the product is available via seed companies, you know, commercialize the treated seeds. And uh, what does the farmer get in return? Uh, what we have observed in all our trials is that uh, you will save at least one for your spray sometimes even two or three. And on top of that, you get uh, the yield boost that Spade was presenting. In our trials, we see within five and 20% yield increase on top. So you pay the equivalent of one for your spray, you save at least one spray, and you get the, the yield boost. Wow, that's a good, impressive. So it's mostly de delivered uh, by the seed uh, companies and farmers can save quite a bit by reducing the number of uh, foliar sprays. Excellent. I think uh, the last question quickly, uh, uh, it seems time is up soon, goes to uh, Palle. Uh, from your global view, what would be the recommendations related to insect resistance management? Well, it's a long question and it's an excellent question, Martin. And I think it's something as we as an, an industry, we're gonna have to deal with uh, insects or diseases um, in any cases, when we are using uh, uh, mode of actions to control, a uh, single mode of action to control an insect, for example, um, when you are diversifying, doing multiple mode of actions, uh, foliar sprays, uh, you want to be sure your foliar sprays have a different mode of action as you see treatments um, using in combination with GM traits as well. Um, for insect resistant management, if we don't monitor that particularly with an insects that are reproducing so fast, the probability you will get resistance is very high. So this requires very good agronomic uh, scouting, training, uh, management, um, tracking of what is used in the field. And I think we can, uh, we can, we can, we have examples around the world where this was not done. Um, I know areas like in Puerto Rico where we have seen uh, the insects surviving there the whole year, every day, and reproducing very high insect pressure. You're really gonna to have to be very careful what you're doing to be able to have these insecticides available for the future. And, um, and uh, so this is very critical. So keep track of what you're using, follow label recommendation, 
diversify, so different mode of action that give you the best insect resistant management recommendation you can do. Very good, Pali. Thank you so much. So the key word there is clearly it's an integrated approach, multi-mode of action. And I can only repeat what is written on this slide. I guess uh, you should see it. Ask us a question. So unfortunately, we were not able to respond to all questions, but I do promise uh, you can still forward more questions and we will come back to you in writing in responding to all of your questions. I don't know how you feel. For me, it was a, a very rich uh, 45 minutes, uh, excellent insights. We learned a lot. And uh, I would say from my point of view, and I tried to put here the next slide and the last slide on, as we all collaborate in new ways, I'm sure as a society, as a company, and you as important agribusiness stakeholders, together we will bring new solutions to market anyway. Yes, times are difficult and the coronavirus uh, has learned us quite a number of le le lessons, obviously. But maybe after this, we can actually, as an industry, emerge even stronger. Already see here in, in, in Europe, we see how suddenly people take it for granted that the farmer actually produces enough food for them. So with this, uh, I would like to thank you all uh, for your interest in our webinar. I uh, hope you found it useful. Uh, I'm glad to inform you that already on April 20, we will have uh, the next uh, seed care webinar, which will deal with the importance of seed quality and the uh, importance of quality of treatments, obviously, as well, which will be led by our Seed Care Institute uh, expert. In the meantime, I wish you good luck. Stay safe. Follow the rules of your local health authorities. Thank you for everything you do for your business. And I wish you yourselves and your families all the best. Stay healthy. Thank you.